1690. Live from the oven right now here, CJ Lowe, 1690 AM.
Casper Skulls are here right now, and they just performed live. How are you guys doing? Hello. Good. Doing good. Hello, Hello, hello. Thanks for having us. Oh, thanks, yes. for, thanks for being here. I know it's uh, a little bit early, um, yeah. um, but I, we appreciate it. We got some, uh, got some snacks and stuff in you. But uh, yeah, thank you for being here, and thanks for the show at uh, Lesco last week. So I was there in the crowd. I didn't manage to say hey. I didn't find like a moment, but uh, it was awesome. I uh, hadn't seen you guys in like a year or so. That was really nice to see kind of like how far you've come in a year it's been a little bit crazy hasn't it a little bit yeah yeah um, i guess with every release like you get new fans and then you somehow get to this probably a place that you want to be and now we're playing with land of talk which is kind of really cool yeah yeah <laughs> we were just talking about how that's kind of we all listen to land of in talk school, i guess in high yeah. school yeah yeah it's a bit of a dream come true yeah that was one much. of the things i was going to ask if you guys uh, were fans of land of talk so that that must be mm-hmm. a, an awesome experience so Mercy Works just came out November 3rd on Buzz Records, which is an awesome label and we love here at CJLO. You guys got grays on there and there's weaves and so much. Um, I wanted to know, uh, well, first and foremost, congratulations on the album. I know Thank it's you. Been Thank a, you so much. It's been, it's been coming for a while. But uh, I wanted to know that now that you have an LP and an EP under your belt, and I'm not sure if everyone here has recorded an LP before, what the what the main differences you found between the EP, other than obviously putting more tracks on an album, what you found like the main differences in the process of, of recording or writing for, for that were? Sure. Do you want to go? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> I mean, our, especially with our EP, like we were just kind of like experimenting with stuff. Like we didn't really know, like, I mean, like, we had an idea of what sounds we wanted to make, but we didn't know like where we wanted to like how we wanted to encapsulate that for the the LP right. until we kind of wrote this song called You Can Call Me Allocator, which mm-hmm. is the one of the leading singles from the, the, the record. Right. And it kind of goes in this more m- melodic direction. And we were kind of like, oh, yeah, like that's kind of the type of music that we want to be making. Like that's mm. like we're very emotional people. Like, we're sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. So then after that, um, this the record kind of just pretty much wrote itself like um, it has to do a lot of, of our life experiences, um, okay. some deaths that we've um, experienced mm. of, of, like, of, like of some friends and um, like of relatives and, okay. and just kind of processing all of that. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of, it's kind of like our um, our self-portrait in, in a way. Okay. I guess, yeah. Wow, all right. I know that on the, the EP, you, uh, there was Shazad from Grace that yeah. was in the studio, and as well as, um, 
Oh my gosh, Josh Carodi. That's yeah. the name. I always want to call him Alex for some reason. I'm not I'm not <laughs> sure why. Well, we worked with Alex Newport on I, the yeah. Phone, so that might be it. Yeah. <laughs> but I read in an interview. I think it was you, Melanie, that said it. Um, with the first EP, you guys kind of had this vision that was Sonic Youth inspired, or at least that's yeah. what Shazad and and uh, and the crew were kind of like pushing you towards, or at least trying to like get to that sound. And I. I'm I'm hearing like a total different direction. It's not a massive departure mm-hmm. or anything, but like you said, it's more melodic. It's more, it, it's bigger. There's strings on there. There's a, some piano on there at times. I think it's just more us. Like it's, it's more, more you. Yeah, it's more. Um, it's like like I said, like the emotional aspect of it. Like mm-hmm. like we're just that's just kind of we wear our feelings on our sleeves. Kind so of, it's like, more of a natural it's, kind of it's process. It's more natural, yeah, right. yeah, for okay. sure. The EP was, like, pretty different from the uh, the earlier stuff, too. Mm-hmm. So the early singles we had were, like, very crunchy. And then even the EP was, like, a departure from that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the album is especially, like, pretty different from the EP now. Right. I think we're just, like, growing as a band, growing as people, growing as friends. Mm-hmm. And the more that we do that, the more that we can experiment and trust each other and, and try new things. And that's really great. Like, nice. we don't really have anybody that's kind of like, well, no, let's go back to the beginning. You know, right. like, we're all kind of like, no, like, we're in this journey together. Like, let's experiment. Let's try. Cool. That's that's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I find, too, um, the re- like, the, the record of the progression is more reflective of, like, how our tastes change, maybe. Like, mm. Maybe when we or when we wrote this first single or like the EP or anything like that, it was more like we were probably listening to more kind of punk music, but like right. our tastes have changed, so we wanted to move more towards melody and like kind of. I think we just kind of got tired. Like we explored as much as we wanted to explore of that, and now right. we want to try doing something different. And awesome. I'm sure it'll be it'll be that way for the second record. Like cool. Continue to explore different stuff. You guys are already planning that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it was also more of like a statement and an impactful thing. Okay. So it was more of like, let's get these sort of faster paced songs out. Mm-hmm. And like, it was kind of, we were behind on recording. So oh, okay. now we're, we're kind of finally caught up on the recordings. It was more of this like, let's just get like the faster paced songs out. It was kind of, I guess we always felt this pressure to keep moving forward so even writing those songs i think kind of translated even in the music right and now we took a bit more time with the full length okay and and, uh took it a lot more serious and it was a long process i think was it yeah Yeah. it was like compared to the ep it was like a painstaking like Uh. waiting game and like you know lots of just i don't know like just a lot of work so, and tri- effort, trial and yeah. errors. Yeah, exactly. Trial and errors, exactly. Yeah. So when you say it was a bit of a waiting game, you mean in terms of like getting it released through the the label and, and all of that? The recording process too. Because yeah. Josh got sick for a bit. So oh, okay. the momentum kind of went down after we were doing uh, like the live off the floor stuff. And right. then he got sick and then we did the overdubs like a kind of like I think like a week later even. So okay. um, we had to get back into that recording mindset. Mm. So do you feel like maybe that break changed the direction that the album was going in in, in mm-hmm. any sort of way or That's did it interesting i mean mm. i, I could have mm. um i'm not i'm not sure how much like it would have like we would have like picked up a, like within a week of time but like right, right, i yeah. i'm sure that like dr- like hopping into the studio at that point like maybe we had some more like we were able to sit more and have more ideas after hearing the beds right yeah. so that that yeah, could help the momentum and definitely, like the pacing of it definitely like i think changed mm-hmm. a little bit but the songs were like already there Mm. It's not like there's anything that we like wrote in that time or anything that we wanted to add. Like everything was already there and ready to go. Cool. It was just more the pace that kind of just like changed. Right on. Yeah, get out of the listener fatigue maybe a little bit. Just yeah. like reflect on the final touches. Well, that's really nice. Um, have you now? It's been pretty much a month since the record's been out. I mean, yeah. I'm counting days. But uh, have you noticed a difference in the way that people are reacting to the songs? Uh, maybe now that they're the record's out and people know the words and and the changes and the dynamics. We or? haven't played a Toronto show yet, actually. Oh, right. And that's kind of like our hometown. So um, yeah. Yep. We're really excited for the the Great Hall show, which is on Saturday. Sold out. It's sold saw, out. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like we're excited to see like cool. if if people are like how they react live, I guess, and yeah. if they've been listening and if they want to sing along with us, like we encourage that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 interesting to see sometimes how like uh, people will pick up on the singles and be like noticing them in in the new sets and things like mm-hmm. that. But I do want to get to the tour later because yeah, yeah. you guys have been doing that for a bit. But I'm really fascinated in the in the songwriting itself, both both the the structures of the songs and then the lyrics i understand you two are the main writers in terms of lyrics and then the whole band gets together um 
I I really enjoy when bands put the lyrics on the band camp like you guys have done because I've been listening through through the songs and following along with the words and you're cool. both very incredible writers like I'm not like it, it really I think in this day and age it really shines and stands Thank out you. Um, yeah we put them up right away like we we wanted people to be able to read something along with it so yeah. even in our vinyl like it's a gatefold and oh. all the lyrics are there all right very nice mm-hmm. I'm gonna grab one of those and, tonight and, yeah and Mel actually <laughs> designed artwork for each individual song oh. Oh, for each song. He's my art manager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we always make jokes about that because he always yeah. says that. <laughs> He's a sweetie. <laughs> Next stop, New York. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, let's talk about the artwork then. We'll go back to the, because we're on it right now. So I, I wanted to know like how that whole, uh, how you put that together, what your background is with art, because I yeah. noticed that you saw, you did the EP as well, yeah, correct? Yeah, I did. And, I've, and, I've done, mo- I think everything except for one shirt. Our friend Sean Richmond okay. did uh, one of our shirts. And cool. It was, it was a, like our bestseller. So. Yeah, it was a, oh. It was a repress. So that one. <laughs> <laughs> <A> repress. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, um, I went to Sheridan. Okay, cool. I, I moved away from Sudbury, Ontario, sadly, my, my hometown. Mm. And then um, we did long distance, Neil and I. Right. Um, and then I just like, I did visual and creative arts. I really, really enjoyed it. Some of the best years I spent nice. making art was at that school. Um, and then he moved down my third year. Mm. And then uh, he was in bands in Sudbury. Um, I wasn't though. Like I was like a bedroom musician like bedroom musician yeah, like yeah. just yeah you know, one of those and then uh neil and i that summer when i came home he kind of encouraged us to like, start writing together and try mm. um so we did and then um we ended up bringing a bit of that when he moved and then we tried to find a band start something like that because he didn't have anything in oakville like he just moved there right. like i had all the friends from school but he didn't have okay. anything yeah and so um we uh he started checking Kijiji, and uh, lo and behold, Chris was on there <laughs> you know, looking for the same things. I read we about for. that. Yeah, I yeah. did read about that, and I, I wanted to touch on that later. <laughs> I think I've never heard that work before. It's weird. Yeah. And he's like our, our best pal. Like We're all the best pals, because then he brought Frazier into the mix, and we're all right. just we're in love. I had a Kijiji ad up as well. <laughs> <laughs> we're just looking for each other <laughs> uh, that's amazing yeah. I, i've done it too but it never works like in bands that i've been in mm-hmm. i get lineups of people that are just so different than what you're like looking for sometimes i was extremely specific about okay. the bands that i was listening to right so i i like put a couple like i put like weezer pinkerton blue album then i put the band teen anger mm. um dirty nil nice. and i'm sure there was another local on there right and Neil responded. And he was like, "Yeah, I'm real. I'm into Pinkerton, not so much Blue Album, Teen Anger <laughs> Rules, Dirty Nil are good friends of mine." And then we kind of like hit it off from there. Right on, cool. Um, yeah, I think back to like the artwork though. Like Mel, Mel came home with this book by Andrew Wyeth called the Helga. The Helga Pictures. Um, okay. He's my favorite artist. Oh, right on. And um, he does these like kind of half portraits of people he won't finish them like mm. I mean, it's the same woman actually then throughout the book but okay. even like in his other sketches and things like that like he'll do that um they're like unfinished and they're like um with watercolor they're with like really really wet oil okay and um he'll just like paint he'll, he'll draw it out and then he'll paint kind of half of it oh. and it looks incredible like you can see some of the pencils still trailing off and stuff like that so it's like oh that's so inspiring oh, that's- so um i decided that before i found that book i decided i wanted to do um uh, like a kind of like a self portrait for each song, and um, so I did that. It's all in the gatefold too. Like each um, song carries like its own um, little image. That's awesome. Um, that has to do with something like a story behind an inside joke. Like like one of them, like color the outside. Like that's I work beside this gelatin factory, <laughs> and it's like it's creepy and it looks like 1984. And it's just like okay. there's windows and doors that go to nowhere. Smokestacks. <laughs> yes, there is. Yeah, and then behind it, there's a Ubisoft like. Um, like water tower thing oh, and it just it's just like the, the visual is just like really incredible and i look at it every day so it just kind of made its way into the artwork but naturally yeah so just like things like that like there's one that's like neil and i for dichotomies because that song's kind of about our relationship mm-hmm. um uh yeah just like they're all there and you can take a look at them if you ever buy the vinyl or if you awesome. actually um for our release show mm-hmm. um which we're still in the works of we wanted to do like a gallery setting oh, we're that's still talking so nice. about this but cool. um yeah we cool. wanted to put all the artwork up on display so the release show is coming after the yeah yeah, yeah it'll be all in right. a bit that's awesome mm-hmm. well that's great to hear yeah that's mm-hmm. not I, I don't see that happen 
often these days anymore where someone from the band is actually producing the artwork i find it's always like a friend or something so that's mm-hmm. that's interesting we're very very in this <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this is yeah yeah you've got the the it's gear real. guy you've got <laughs> art yeah you're all you're all covered we all have jobs yeah, uh, chris yeah. actually he did finance so he's our money man right on neil what are, what are, what are you uh, yeah, up to <laughs> no 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 no. that's not true he is like he's, he's very he's the logistics. humble yeah. yeah like he takes care of all of that okay cool right on well back to the uh the songwriting and the lyrics there's uh there's a lot of themes. I mean, the the album's called Mercy Works, but listening through, I realized that that word, mercy, comes mm-hmm. up a lot. And I was wondering if there was any sort of connection to anything specific with that or that you just kind of found found its way into your lyrics naturally. Yeah, I think, like, the second thing, like, it just found its way into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, kind of like your observation, we saw it come up a lot in our lyrics just naturally even if we'd write lyrics separately it would like still come up Mm. um yeah so we thought it'd be like cool to include it in the title um and it's pulled from a lyric from primeval Mm -hmm. as well so mercy um, works when you want it yeah Yeah. Yeah. um yeah so i i think it was just like how much it was occurring it was like we had to name a record (laughs) with like that word (laughs) well not necessarily like we like I think with our writing processes, like it kind of cross paths too. Like I would write like in color of the outside, like there's a lyric that goes, um, um, God fearing mercies. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like a lot of when the mercy is brought up, it's kind of like, it's kind of a reflective thing about something like, um, like, like I said, every song is about something different and it's probably pretty emotional. Um, so I think that that word just kind of really encapsulates like the feeling of the record and like what we're trying to get at with it. And, um, so it really, really fit really well for it. Cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that just listening through this record kind of took over my November in, in, <laughs> in a good. very in a very great way. Um, easily one of my favorites of the year, and, Thank you. and Thank I you. just kept noticing those themes, and uh, and it was very interesting. So mm-hmm. I had to ask, but uh, I also wanted to talk about the the songwriting, the way that you guys kind of collaborate on that. So there's the whole band that gets in on this, but mm-hmm. then you two are the primary songwriter. So I was wondering kind of what the dynamic was in terms of the lyrics when you write them. Do you you said that you sometimes write them apart mm-hmm. and then is it uh, sometimes a collective effort in terms of yeah sometimes yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll bring parts and he'll be like oh like um it's kind of like when you okay i come out with like an art sense it's like mm. when you work on a painting and then you can't really figure out what you want to do in it so then right. you go to another painting and then you figure that equation out in it and then you go right. back to the first painting you're like ah oh, that's i figured it out in this painting i can figure out here now that's kind of what we do like we'll show each other things right. and then he'll be like oh i can hear this here or i can see this word happening or mm. oh, i'll look at that and see oh yeah I, this part would work really well and then it just kind of happens that way like cool mm-hmm. yeah like sometimes mel will write all the verses and i'll write a chorus yeah, or vice exactly. versa mel will write the chorus and i'll write mm. the verses it all depends like who has an idea um yeah, and then other songs Mel will write completely separately from me, and vice versa. It all it's, cool. it's so I don't know. It's whenever we have time to sit alone at home mm-hmm. and yeah. work on something because yeah. we all work full time jobs. Cause, so. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes like Mel and I will sit down and try and write the lyrics together, and we just vibe, and it's great. Mm-hmm. And then other times we're just beaten heads and <laughs> yeah, like exactly getting mad at each other over because <laughs> we each think we're right. And yeah. <laughs> no one's right but we always come to a really good compromise yeah. that's great do you guys ever swap parts do you ever write something and go like yeah totally this is not for me yeah we're, yep. yeah we like mel kind of brought up that maybe we'll try and do less of that on the next record but this record it was just whoever's voice fit the song mm-hmm. cool um yeah so yeah. Go ahead. Oh no. No, just like um like our registers are so different. Mm-hmm. So when Neil tries to sing like a pretty song and he's trying to get his voice going all nice, it's like oh, he's like I I can't do this. Like I can't hit these high notes. <laughs> like like yeah. what am I doing? And right. then and then I'll try to go really low and try to sing like really sultry and then it just sounds bad. <laughs> and then I'm like Neil like talk through this. Just yeah. okay. do this. Yeah. And then uh yeah, we just kind of figure it all out. It all falls into place. Right. On. I like that dynamic cuz there's a few songs on the record uh where Melanie, you sing pretty much the majority of it, and then Neil, you come in at the end with like you a like, verse. Yeah, like I that love that whole dynamic. Yeah, of like, it's cool. Um, kind of, especially in the song Dichotomies, he comes mm-hmm. in at the end with that little spoken word. Yep, it's kind yeah. of 
like to me like I he wrote that because the song is about a relationship it's about how we're such different people but we work very well together like mm. he's very um like uh introverted and I'm pretty extroverted and um it, it actually kind of really complements each other and works really well and that's kind of what the song's about the different dichotomies of a relationship cool. and so um he comes in at the end with that spoken word piece and I I didn't know that he was going to write that and then it was like I like cried when I when I heard it because oh. it's like really beautiful if you read it out as poetry yeah it's like I was like oh my god like it just worked so well and I was like you have to you have to say this part like it's your soul (laughs) (laughs) i was actually telling that uh, to everyone that i really love that balance and like the way that you guys kind of are like this fire and water and it it really is modern poetry like if you read the lyrics out like that they do read like a poem oh thanks and uh you know these days with like the repetitive lyrics and a lot of the top 40 music well like we grew up reading poetry like that's like our like our favorite thing like confessional poets i was always into that or like the b poets when i was in high school Mm. and that just kind of trickled off into like everything else and then um neil too and yeah we just we like we like reading awesome it's good (laughs) so you guys have the kernels or the seeds and then you bring them to the guys here to it and and, they add so much to the songs how does that work yeah what's the process there do you guys jam it out yeah like sometimes we'll just like jam out a part like chris and fraser are super good at structuring the song like very good like we might just have like part a and part b Mm. um but like they'll like write a bridge or like they'll just figure out how the song should be structured cool. and then like I don't even know Fraser's process, but sometimes he'll be like, yeah, I'm going to play baritone on this one. And just, he's I don't, just the coolest. I don't guy. know how he decides like what he's going to do. <laughs> Was that the silver glittery guitar? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Oh man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so nice. Yeah. It's so nice. He's like our big experimental I person. In the okay. Room. This, this new one's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're sharing a mic yeah. for the viewers. <laughs> the voice cra- yeah. That's awesome. And, and I've noticed the dynamic on stage is very apparent. You've got the three the three guitarists in the front, and then you've got the ball of energy in the back, Chris. Oh, my God. And, and it's, it's so awesome to watch. I got, like, at Lesko especially, because you get to be nice and close to the band. It was a very interesting dynamic to, to notice, and I was wondering if that that plays into it because you do play pretty pretty hard i mean you you very very dynamically uh, oriented but like the way that you play i feel really changes maybe the way that that the strong songs come in like at front with the seed and then turn into the song do you feel like you do have that uh do you feel like you've taken a song in another direction has that ever happened where where, where just the drums kind of move it another way primeval yeah mm. We've been working on this song for a while, and we were just thinking, like, what are we doing with this? Okay. Because it, it sounded really good. Other, I thought it sounded really good as just, like, an acoustic song, and then we ended up, like, working out all these things with drums, and then now we just uh, have a, a really good demo of it, and it's, like, got everything. It's, like, all stacked. It's a total rock song now. Awesome. But we were trying to figure it out for, like, the longest time, and we were really, like, having a tough time with it. But, yeah, that happens. That's happened with, like, a bunch of the songs in the past. Too. Cool. Yeah, yeah like, and we always pr- seem... Oh. Sorry. <laughs> we, we always seem to argue a lot but like in in like a positive way right i think like democratically yes democratic <laughs> a lot absolutely. of debate a lot yeah. of debate okay <laughs> I, I think mel and i probably oh yes Chris and I. The most. <laughs> but we always come to a compromise yeah, but it's sure like enough. yeah that's awesome um but to touch on like the the drumming aspect of mm-hmm. it um i'm i'm originally like a guitar player and a singer okay so i definitely didn't Look, like look at drums as like a drummer i kind of looked at it like oh i'm just here to really support these guys and and i think i think that translates i, I think know. it's very apparent because i i do feel like that i mean it's not the end all be all but i do feel like that is a thing that separates bands from like the amateur and the good bands in my opinion i feel like the bands that know how to work together and work their sounds in together r- rather than having like a really loud drummer or a loud guitarist, for example. And I feel like you guys have it all figured out in that Thank sense. Thank you. Thanks for saying yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah. But speaking of Primeval, uh, I mean, that was the video you guys released before. Uh, the, the latest one for, uh, is Franca? Lingua, Lingua Franca. Franca. Yeah. Lingua Franca, yeah. That's a new term that I've been introduced to by this uh, by this album, actually. So I wanted to talk about those, uh, those videos. Let's talk about the latest one sure. right now for Lingua Franca. Um, you two are, I, I read a little <laughs> bit about it, but you two are kind of in the, the Bonnie and Clyde kind yeah. of uh, well, thing going on there. Yeah, tell me about the, sure. the video. Neil and I, like, we really like movies. Like, we watch a lot of movies all the time. Cool. One of our favorite movies is Badlands. And, okay. um and just like other ones like Bonnie and Clyde and stuff like that. Like, so we decided like, hey, like, wouldn't it be really cool if we did some sort of like, like, because, you know, the relationship thing is like mm-hmm. really prominent in those movies and they kind of never really have that 
great of one. <laughs> it's usually pretty heavily on something happening, like manipulation mm, right. or enabling or something like that. So, mm-hmm. I'm like, well, that's kind of an interesting thing to look at um, for uh, like a uh, for a video. So we decided to do that, and we shot it with Ben Dabu, who was uh, just their team is amazing. Like they had everything, all the shots, all the cars, all the everything oh, wow. figured out before we got there. They got us snacks. Wow. Like they budgeted the <laughs> snacks. <laughs> it's crazy. Like it's the real deal. It was really, really <laughs> great. Like just so professional. And cool. um, yeah. And then we, we did that and I, I had so much fun. It was just a blast. We got to play dress up and like, mm play these two people and Chris and Frazier were the cops and yep. they're chasing us around. It was just funny. <laughs> yeah, it was, I really enjoyed the video and the one Thanks. for Primeval with the with the diving into the water. Oh, yeah. I, I really felt like that moment is very kind of aquatic. I don't know. Yeah, like, no, for sure. Like, I, I often kind of relate to, to songs in that way and, yeah. and I felt that. And when I saw the video, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that was our friend sean cosmerly he did that video all himself so there was mm-hmm. this look like, like kind of the opposite there was no crew for that he okay. just did everything he worked himself so hard he worked right. so hard and uh yeah that shot was his idea which yeah i totally agree works so well for that part where'd you guys film that obviously not we filmed Toronto. it um <laughs> at this festival called river and sky which oh, is yeah. just outside our hometown mm-hmm. in sudbury mm-hmm. um cool. and sean sean lives in just moved to toronto but originally from sudbury as well uh yeah so we were playing that festival and sean was there and he just had the idea to do that shot kind of there. So it's cool. Cause we actually started yeah. dating at that festival. <laughs> so oh, it's kind of sentimental. It's like come I was full saying, circle. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's um, so nice. <laughs> yeah. He did, he did such a good job and worked so hard on it. And um, he really understood like what we were kind of going for with it, with mm. like the whole infrastructure versus nature thing. Yeah. Um, and like before we even told him that was the idea we wanted, he came at us and he said, I'm seeing a, this, like an infrastructure versus nature thing. And we're like, whoa, like that's exactly what we're going for. It's a natural the connection. Man. Yeah. yeah that, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, I also think that purple hue in that section is like such a great representation of the color of the song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it like just captures that sort of like purple. I don't know. Like, like the, when I, yeah, when I yeah. listen to it, I actually feel that color. Yeah, it's like really weird. That's interesting. Cause purple is like a color that I often work with when cool. I'm working mm-hmm. on art. Yeah. But that's a bit of that like synesthesia. Kind yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like a mild, mild. No, totally. Mild <laughs> I know. I never like to say I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> I hear colors. <laughs> We've got about like seven minutes left here, so we're running out of time. So I just want to touch on the tour real quick sure. before we go. Um, you guys are ending it in Toronto this weekend. Yes. Yeah. Have you? I, I noticed there's some time in between dates. You've been in Washington, Halifax, Cincinnati, Chicago, Pittsburgh, Philly. Mm-hmm. I love Philly. Um, but you had some days in between. Did you go back to Toronto in between some shows, or were you just no. on the road the whole time? Yeah, we just went out the whole time. We yeah. had one day off in Brooklyn, so okay. that was cool. We got to go to the MoMA and. And to Times Square. I don't know why we did that, but <laughs> I, I did <laughs> the MoMA yeah. was great. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah, after our Montreal show last week, though, we went home for a couple of days. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then just came here last night. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, right on. So um, it's ending in Toronto. You're happy to be back home, I'm imagining. Um, but how, how how's it been? I mean, you guys have been on the road since the 15th of October right that's kind a bad, bad thing yeah kind of because we went out to it's, halifax too and yeah stuff. yeah so you've been doing yeah. things since the 15th yes, of october we have been, we've been <laughs> active yeah. Yeah. yeah so i mean we've been back to work and stuff like that okay how's that t- how has it been though like the whole the whole tour has been it's been good yeah. yeah um everyone seems to be really like happy and it's a good reception of the record so we're really happy about that and awesome. um yeah it's nice to meet new people and see old friends and everything right. and play with them again we got to play with a couple of bands that we like made friends with last time we went out and cool. got to see them again how they're doing and it's really cool awesome any favorite what was your favorite show so far what was our favorite show guys mm, i liked halifax a lot yeah yeah it was fun. um that montreal show was really yeah, great was cool. yeah let's go yeah, yeah it was yeah. great um, yeah they just redid it's that great. venue so I- I, I really liked uh, Cincinnati because oh, cool. we got oh, to play Cincinnati, with, with yeah. this band called Smut from okay, there. Okay, okay. And they're actually going on tour with Bully, who oh, just cool. released their record. Yeah, it's great. So Yeah, yeah I so love cool. it. Yeah. Um, so I we're just like really excited about that band. And cool. uh, that's probably, I, m- personally, my favorite band that we've ever played with. We're like okay. sister bands. We were joking about that. We were playing. We're like, oh. <laughs> Was hugging and oh, like <laughs> that's nice cincinnati's so cool i Such only ever cool got city. to drive through it i was driving from nashville back up to montreal oh. and it looks like a like a spaceship landed cool. mm-hmm. i don't know what it is but yeah. it, it's really interesting at night too like the different lights on the on the different buildings and yeah the way that they are like there's one that's just like a 
a tip and it right. just like lights all down and like that looks weird it's so cool yeah <laughs> so cool what is that yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah we were driving through i think it was like 4 a.m we did an overnight it was nice. it was intense but uh <laughs> we've got only a few minutes left so i've only got one more question for you guys and it has everything to do with the kijiji ad um because i was reading that in the interview and I, w- I was just recounting my own experiences with that whole thing and i was wondering besides chris what is the best thing that you guys have ever found on kijiji and we can extend that to like craigslist and buns or anything yeah. online marketplace I, let's let put Fraser it that way maybe take this one? yeah because he's our kijiji, kijiji man user since like 2007 <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like <laughs> half of my life like uh loyalty program member and everything yeah, they, should, they, should, uh, they should send me some money some <laughs> used bikes or something i don't know mm-hmm. i like i'm trying to think of something really sick that i got but i got a really good drum kit for a good deal nice i've just got a lot of really good deals with a lot of like dads <laughs> um, dads of yeah, the dads I, of I can't think of like one really amazing incredible I good, thing I have a good story. Oh, yeah. go. okay um so it must have been like seven or eight years ago and there was this ad for this guy selling some records and like the list on it was amazing um so me and my friend at the time like we showed up at this guy's house and he's like yeah just like have free reign like everything's like five bucks whatever and there's like Brino rec Eno records, like oh, wow. a bunch of like Joy Division singles. Um just like the whole gambit. Like there's so much like we just had the biggest stacks walking out of this guy's house and they were like five bucks each, so we spent oh, wow. like you know, two hundred bucks and just had you know, like the, the best, best records yeah. ever. Yeah. Um and then we found out like a month later from the record store owner, like this record store owner, because he we noticed like he would on the plastic, he would have a sticker just saying, like, stuff about the record. And we saw some of those in our local record store. And we asked, like, oh, like, we got a bunch of these, too, from this guy. Apparently, the guy had cancer and was selling his oh. whole collection. Um, wow. And he wanted the records to go to, like, people who would actually like them. Because he was, if he told the record store owner that, like, his kids just wouldn't give a crap. And right. Would just, you know, sell them for 200 bucks or something like that to people who don't care. Um so that's one Kijiji story. I well, have. I mean, it's you guys exist now, so maybe like <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. the greatest yeah. Passover ever exactly. in terms of yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very thankful for that Kijiji ad yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got about like a minute left here. So okay. this is, do, do you have a quick uh, Kijiji yeah, find yeah, before we... Uh, my my drum kit that I have. Oh, really? I got off, off uh, Kijiji and uh, the guy we bought it off of, I think everyone was there. We all went to this. Yeah, we all went to Okay. It. Yeah, so we all rolled up like a big posse. And <laughs> <laughs> I think it was in Niagara, was it? Uh, no, Hamilton. 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 Okay. Hamilton. Okay. And we showed up and it's like this nice clear kit. It's called Zico's. And uh, he was like, oh, yeah, I used to be on the show Dis- Disband. Do you guys remember no that way. show? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I do remember that show. <laughs> yeah, uh, so it was really funny and and. Like we still tour with that kit since like 2015. So it's good kit. That's yeah. awesome. It's like a nice small little guy. So right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Casper Skulls. If you're just tuning in now, you can catch Casper Skulls tonight at the Phi Center with Land of Talk. It's going to be incredible. You guys are on at 8:30. I think it was. That's right. 8:30. Cool. So yeah, thank you for tuning in to Plus One here on CJLO 1690 AM, your weekly guide to live music in Montreal. Everyone, say bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Sit at 1690.